Hello everyone, welcome to a sequel to the previous video. As you can see, you will, you will see the uh, leftover paint from the last session. Uh, this is a very faint ghost. So I'm going to start by putting some curved lines. These are totally random. And by starting with a Sharpie pen, this becomes the very first layer and gets picked up by the successive layers. And it provides additional texture. Okay. So that's the first layer of, of lines. Now this is leftover uh, Mars black and then I mixed it with some bronze just to uh, make it a little different. So I'm going to follow the the theme of the, this is too much. Now since it's watered down, the oil content creates these textures. Okay, so that's it for the circles made of uh, watered-down acrylic. Uh, let me show you up close. So the oil content of the gel plate creates these lacy kind of uh, patterns. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, this is somewhat dry, not completely dry, but that's all right. I'm going to add some raw sienna. And some unbleached titanium. So the pickup layer is going to be light.
I think what happens when you pick up a ghost print is this very thin film of paint acts like a, a glue or an adhesive and this glue allows the paper to act like a piece of tape and then it picks up everything on the plate. At least that's what I suspect. This is my one of my favorite papers. This is Somerset. I like it because it's uh, fairly strong. And since it's made of 100% cotton, it has uh, what you call tensile strength. That it, it holds up to stretching and pulling better than a paper that is made of uh, cellulose. Because the, the cheaper papers are made of part cotton and part cellulose. They do a blend to keep the costs down because uh, I guess the cotton content is expensive to produce. So since I'm picking up the marks of the Sharpie and then the leftover paint, uh, several layers of leftover paint, I'm going to leave this for about 10 minutes. Okay, let's see what we have here. I think the, I can tell from the very first few inches that the pickup is very good. I just have to be careful when I pull this. It did pick up the ghost. And it's interesting that different papers behave very differently. Now, since this paper is made of cotton, it behaves more like a heavy fabric than what you would imagine a paper to behave like. But I think the textures and details are pretty incredible. And I think my uh, habitual boiling of this plate is paying off. 
because even if the paper is stuck to the plate, it's not tearing at all. Check this out. Who would have thought? Here, let me do a really close up so you can see. I think these details are so cool. I like this part with the red. So I have to study this very well and decide if I need to add something else. So uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. This is dry quite nicely. Now this is just a little observation and uh, a little comment I'm going to make. I'm disappointed that the gel plate doesn't stay where it's supposed to. See here it's three and a quarter and here it's three and a half which means it shifted its position this way. So ever so often, I like to check the distance. Uh, now for some other artists whose work are more freeform, that doesn't matter that much. But I do like to keep the borders more or less within a certain measurement. Uh, that's just me. Um, but anyway, I uh, can't leave well enough alone, as you know. And, you know, these little bits of teal here are a cue uh, that I should add metallic teal. And I want to try this out. This is a Blick Studio Acrylic. And uh, I'm going to use an oil resist and see what the result will be. I'm, I'm sure it will be very cool, but I don't know exactly uh, yet. So I'm going to try it out. So this is my mixture of Vaseline and oil and I'm going to do my usual shapes And I'm using both measurements, uh, both thicknesses of, of the brush.
So I'm doing open circles and some are closed. Okay. Uh, it's too bad you can't see this too clearly on the, the screen because it's transparent. But um, there's a slight sheen to it, light shine. So you, you can tell the, the shiny part is the oily part. I even thought of tinting the oil with some oil paint, but that would make things a little more complicated because the additional color will be distracting. So I'm going to stick to the clear mixture for now. Um, so I'm going to do a mix of metallic teal The metallic teal goes on the outer edges and this turquoise is going to go in the middle. Okay, so let's see how this works out. See, for the longest time during my experience making prints, I've always wondered what is the secret formula to pick up ghost prints. I thought, you know, maybe it's the paper or the consistency of the paint. It's really a combination of things. And I think this oil resist is very successful. And it is like one of the viewers made a comment. It's really a common household item. You don't have to buy special art supplies. Okay, I think the scribbles add even more texture. And here is the print. And not press, pressing hard at all, just very lightly passing my hand because the teal is very watery.
pretty wild. It's a little busier than I want, but it's an experiment. And I think this is a lovely ghost print. Looks like I have a clogged nozzle here. So this is Arctic. deep yellow Sorry for the squeaky sprayer. Now, um, I'll show you something. You see this part that is transparent? I think that's the extender of the Lacrylic. It's kind of like a filler to to increase the volume, because this is a student paint for classrooms. So, to keep costs down, I think they they add more extenders, but it's the extender that picks up the ghost prints, and I think it does a very good job. Let me do my scribble. for five more minutes. Okay, now let's see what we got here.
pretty interesting result. It's almost almost like a tie-dye effect. Pretty cool. So I'm going to let these two prints dry and then come back. The first print, to be honest, I was really regretting doing what I did. I said I shouldn't have done that. I should have left it alone. But that's how you learn. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not happy with all the results, but you won't know till you try. And by this constant trying, that's how you learn from your mistakes. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, back from a short break, I went through my reusable stencils and I'm going to try to salvage what uh, I'm not happy with. Um, I find this a little too busy and the teal is overpowering so I want to maybe do a, a deep yellow in the middle and then something really bright like cadmium red on the edges. I'm just going to keep going uh, because I'm not satisfied with this. I know many of you are going to say you should have left it alone, but uh, I can't help myself. And uh, I came across a, a, a comment from an artist. I don't remember where I saw it. It may have been Instagram or YouTube about when someone tells you you should do it this way or you should have done it that way, it kind of makes you static. Uh, it kills your creativity sometimes when you have too many restrictions. And I think the, the secret to growing as an artist is you lose your fear of making mistakes. So that's what I'm going to try today is not be afraid and just keep going. So anyways, I have put here some of my reusable stencils. I'm going to do a layer of yellow here. And cadmium red on the top.
Okay, let's see if I can make this look better. I know it's purely a subjective matter, but I want to be satisfied with it. Otherwise, I don't feel comfortable showing it to people if I'm not happy with the print or any artwork for that matter. And that's why oftentimes I rework my old work. Uh, I freshen them up. Okay, I will leave this for another five minutes. Okay, let's see what we have here. Yep, I think it adds a little bit of interest and contrast. It's still a little busy, but I think it's a little better. It's a little less monotonous and pretty colorful. This is a close-up. I like that much better. I like the introduction of some clear cut shapes on top of a, a very nondescript or indistinct field of texture. See, this way it has a structure or a scaffolding. And the plain areas emphasize the intricate detail of the background. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm happy with this save. It wasn't a complete loss. So let me go on to the next print. I'm going to try uh, a clear matte medium and see if I can pick up this. All right, let's see what we have here. I think some of it worked. Yeah, it did pick up. Cool. 
So this stuff actually works very well. Fluid matte medium. And you don't need a whole lot. Okay. It just gives a little touch of the red color, which I wanted. Okay, cool. So I'll air dry these two guys and then recap. Okay, I'm back. This dried very nicely. And I'm happy that the paper is not wrinkled or wavy. So here is a close-up. And as you can see, the introduction of the uh, clear cut shapes makes a difference, at least in my opinion. And the uh, contrasting color gives some uh, definition. So I like the introduction of the vermilion against the blue. And also the uh, yellow so this is the first print and this is the second one I like the way they turned out. This one has a bit of a lighter value. And the addition of the red just gives it a little more interest and contrast. So I will put these two side by side. So you can see that they are sister prints. They have very similar structure, but they have a variation of color and value. This is a deeper value. This is a much lighter one. So I'm glad you were able to join me with this experiment and thank you for coming along for the ride. Thank you for subscribing and watching. And for those of you who can, if you can lend some support to my PayPal to help keep this channel going. I hope to see you next time.